My name is Megan Stewart Sicking, and I'm the rector of Emanuel Episcopal Church in Sparks Glencoe, Maryland. As many of you know, Mary Frances spent her entire life a happy member of the Church of the Redeemer in Baltimore, and also joined us here in her later years at Emanuel Church as well, a much shorter drive, an easier drive on Sunday mornings from Broadmead, and we would always enjoy seeing that full car of Broadmeaders drive up our hill on Sunday mornings with Mary Frances always in it. She's now interred with her husband, Philip, in the columbarium wall outside the chapel at the Church of the Redeemer. It was her wish that this service be held at Broadmead, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're unable to hold a service together at this time. We can't hold a sizable gathering that we might expect for this service, but we're glad to be with you here in this way. We're glad to be with you in any way we possibly can so that we can remember and honor and celebrate the life of this amazing woman, Mary Frances Wigley. If you have access to the bulletin that we made available online, or if you happen to have an Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, you may follow along with the service beginning on page 491 in the Book of Common Prayer. All of our hymns today will be shown by video. They have been recorded by the Emanuel Church Choir and coordinated by Jen Nugent, our Director of Music Ministries. Each hymn number is shown at the beginning of the video, so if you happen to have a hymnal, then you may follow or sing along. We now begin our service with our first hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, He made their glowing colors, He made Sunset and the morning that brightens of the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the winter. Pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. see them, and lives that we might tell, how great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God Our service begins on page 491 in the Book of Common Prayer. 
I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day, Mary Frances. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate to eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Mary Frances's family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now continue with remembrances from Mary Frances's family. Mary Frances loved her church community and I know spirituality meant a lot to her. We'd visit Emmanuel on occasion when I came to and visited Gaia at Broadmead. Um, and while our topics of conversation seemed pretty limitless, prayer and religion and spirituality were rarely talked about in depth. Um, Gaia did, <clears throat> however, really shape my image of what prayer was. My mother would tell me about the routine that guy would encourage in her, which was, you know, kneeling by the bedside before bed and elbows on the mattress and reciting a prayer for the well-being and health of friends and family and pets. And um, whenever I thought about prayer and my prayer routine or just what prayer looked like, guy would come to mind for that reason, for the reason of instilling a practice in my mother. Um, <clears throat> what Guy and I did talk about and what we really did encourage within one another was paying attention and observing and inquiring. Um, she was always certain to know the trees and the plants and the birds in her surrounding area and um, we fed off each other's inherent knack for observation and inquiry and curiosity. Um, and that's where our relationship really, really thrived and grew a lot. Um, it wasn't until after Guy's death that I read her list of commandments. And number seven is very simple and it says pay attention. Uh, in preparing to read something or write something for this service, I was flipping through some poems by Mary Oliver, and a quote of hers really stood out to me. Uh, it reads, I don't know exactly what prayer is. I do know how to pay attention. And it turns out that guy was teaching me about prayer through encouraging attention and observation and curiosity within me all along. We will be reading I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth in honor of our grandmother who was an avid gardener and would recite this poem every spring. 
I wandered, lonely as a cloud, that floats on high over vales and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. 10,000 saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such jackened company. I gazed and gazed, but with little thought for what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Meph. I'm sitting here on Easter Sunday in Palo Pinto County, and I'm thinking of you. This is where you, you spent part of your honeymoon. I talk to you every day. I often ask, what would Mary Frances do in this situation? I absolutely love your pa loved your passion for life. I loved your passion for learning, for birding, for gardening, for always identifying a tree or a wildflower. It was so special. But above all, what I'm most thankful for is your passion for your family. I really appreciate, appreciated your level of energy and how you lived each day to the fullest. I have so many wonderful memories of you from childhood to adulthood, whether it be sailing or riding in the car with the kids, um, and the great conversations that we had. I remember so fondly our road trips with Jay and Joe Booz, with McLean Cover, with Ham Lord, with Christopher Crace, just to name a few. And I really cherish those three days in mid-October that I spent with you last year. That was special, just talking and laughing and eating crab cakes and going to Eddie's supermarket. Um, that was so fun. You were a very special person in my life. You set such a great example. Um, just your level of energy, your desire to learn, your principles. You were a woman of deep faith. You led well. You led St. Paul School for Girls. You led on the various boards that you were on. You led at Broadmead. Um, you led at Episcopal Social Ministries. I miss you dearly. I love you dearly. And there's not a day that goes by, often an hour that goes by, that I don't think of you. I love you. Thank you all for joining us as we honor and celebrate our mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother, Mary Frances. Mummy was an inveterate note-taker and list maker. She recorded all the classes she took and books she read in beautiful leather bound journals, writing with fine ink fountain pens. She and my father traveled the world and everywhere they went, they recorded the birds they saw in their life as their lifetime bird list of which they were very proud. At home, she recorded the plantings and flowerings in her garden. And on the kitchen cabinet, she kept lists of the numbers of various vegetables harvested every day. When we were sent out to pick cherries or raspberries, we had to record the number of pints on the list before we could eat them. She was trained as a scientist and keeping accurate records of her observations came quite naturally. So it is no surprise that she also had her own list version of the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments by and for Mary Frances Wagley and not written in stone. One, try to obey the Mosaic Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. They are good rules for personal, family, and community life. Two, 
Love God with your whole being, as God is a difficult and, for me, inaccessible concept. Read the New Testament to learn about the historical Jesus, the Gospels, and the risen Christ in the Acts and the Epistles. Jesus is a metaphor for God. Love your neighbor as yourself. The Greeks were right. Know thyself is a good starting point if you are to love yourself. Your neighbor is defined in Luke chapter 22, verses 25 through 37, in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Any one of your acquaintance or whom you come across who needs help. Four, get rid of egocentrism as far as possible, remembering that even though it's been centuries since we supposedly gave up geocentrism, the Baltimore Sun gives sunrise and sunset times each morning as if the paper believed that the sun rotates around the earth. Five, try to get rid of prejudice. It helps to remember that everyone you meet is a child of God, a temple of the Holy Spirit, and a sister or brother for whom Christ died. Six, heed Joseph Campbell and, quote, follow your bliss. We all have different natures and talents, and we should develop ours. Seven, pay attention. This gets harder and harder to do as time goes by, so pay attention to paying attention. Eight, as we approach the ends of our earthly journeys, what should have been apparent all along, but usually has not been, becomes clear. We can't own anything. We are simply stewards. Be mindful of this and try to be a good steward. Nine, treasure and cherish family members and friends, even if they are impossible at times. 10, life is a gift. Take time to note your gratitude, probably before you go to sleep each night for specific things. Try to acquire a grateful heart. It is often said that without death, our lives would lose their shape. Maybe we live more fully, maybe we care and love more deeply because life is transient. I don't know if my mother thought often about death, but I do know, as I'm sure many of you know, that she cared deeply about the shape of her life. Hence, as Annie has shared, she wrote her own Ten Commandments. And she was serious, intentional, and deeply committed to those values. There are two attributes within those commandments that I'd like to reflect on. Mary Frances loved knowledge, from profound wisdom, the realization that we can't own anything really, to little tidbits of information, like a sugar maple's leaves are darker on one side than the other that combining salt and vinegar to create sodium acetate and hydrogen chloride, that will take an old penny and shine it like new. And of course, the secret to growing larger tomatoes is to pinch off the sucker leaves between the stems. When Jay and I were deep into her storage closet sorting and cleaning, we found a few dozen index card boxes. Usually such boxes hold recipes, not for Mary Frances. On each of these boxes was a plastic label, books read, and then the dates, 1947, 54, 60, on and on, many boxes. It wasn't just a list of the books within, it was her analysis of each book and selected quotations that she agreed or disagreed with. Perhaps profound knowledge, perhaps tidbits of information. This was Mary Frances heeding J Joseph Campbell's Follow Your Bliss one of her commandments. For this analytical, intellectual, always learning orientation was her bliss. This was her shaping her life. There is another characteristic of my mother's that had a profound impact in the shaping of her, of her life. It's called courage. Courage to be the female pioneer who donned a white lab coat and spent hours over a Bunsen burners in the late 1940s. To head to Oxford for her PhD. And then, in a different way, courage to veer from that hard-earned and valued life to marry and begin a family. Dad was very kind and thoughtful, with some specific hopes for their life together. 
like having her lacy things hang next to his suits in their closet. This was not a welcomed vision for Mary Frances. I asked as a child whenever she lovingly recounted this, what did you say, mommy? She always answered with characteristic deliberateness and calm, I told your father I don't wear lacy things and I'd have my own closet. To a young, impressionable daughter, her mother was indeed shaping a life that worked for her. And it did indeed take courage. And by the way, our father respectfully and fully altered his vision. I do, do believe that the reality of death helps to shape our lives. I also believe that Mary Frances's courageous shaping of her own life leaves a lasting legacy for all of us. I, and I hope others, especially my children and nieces and nephews, will think often of Mary Frances and her choices, to value our personal, professional, and civic responsibilities, to love our neighbors, to rid ourselves of prejudice, to pay attention, and to be grateful always, to intentionally shape our own lives. And to do that, to do that well and thoughtfully takes an enormous amount of courage. So Mary Frances, Meph, Gaia, Mommy, thank you. Thank you for living your commandments that shaped your remarkable life and that inspire us as we live ours. And I promise I will pinch off the sucker leaves of my tomato plants and be forever grateful for that little tidbit of knowledge. Our next hymn is from the 1940 hymnal of the Episcopal Church. It wasn't included in our current hymnal and Mary Frances could never understand why. And to be honest, after learning about it, I can't understand why either. It's a wonderful hymn. It was one of her favorites. And I am thankful that she introduced our congregation to it. We have used it with some regularity ever since. We thank you, Lord of Heaven. We thank you, Lord of heaven, for all the joys that greet us, for all that you have given to help us and delight us in earth and sky and seas. The sunlight on the meadows, the rainbow's fleeting wonder, the clouds we We now continue our service with the readings. The readings are offered by members of Mary Frances's family and also members of Emmanuel Church who also live at Broadmead. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. For you did not reveal, receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption 
When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, and who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. This is Psalm 84, read by Philip and Eliza Wagley. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and a longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's ways. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayers. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield, he will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. And blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, or they will be called the children of God. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. This was also one of Mary Frances's favorites and one that she especially asked to be included in her funeral service when the time came. 
This version we produced this past All Saints Sunday in November, and it includes not only our choir edited together, but also pictures of young people from our congregation playing out some of the parts, as you will see in just a moment. I was really excited for Mary Frances to get to see this version that we made. Unfortunately, that was the morning that she died. I received word right at the end of the service of her death, so she never got to see this particular version, but I'm glad to share it here with you today and to share one of her favorites. I sing a song of the saints of God. I sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. And one was a doctor, and one was a queen, and one was a shepherdess on the green. They were all of the saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. They all then was so dear, so dear, and his love made them strong. And they followed the right for Jesus' sake, the whole of their good lives long. And one was a soldier, and one was a priest, and one was slain by a fierce wild beast. And there's not any reason, no, not the least, why I shouldn't be one too. They lived not only in ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joy of saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them at school, or in lanes, or at sea, in church, or in trains, or in shops, or at tea. For the saints of God are just folks like me, and I mean to be one. In this homily, I want to go back to a few lines from the scriptures we've read, a hymn that we sang, and uh, think about how some of those ideas might carry us forward. And I want to start by going back to Psalm 84, which some family members read for us earlier. And this is a favorite psalm of mine. It was a favorite psalm of Mary Frances's. And I'm not sure that you can see it in this video, but in this stole that I'm wearing, there are words stitched all the way up and down the length of the stole. And the words are part of a hymn based on Psalm 84. And I told this story to a couple of her children uh, at the interment and about probably about three years, maybe a little more ago now, I was going to be preaching on Psalm 84 one Sunday morning, and it happened to be a rainy day, and I was disappointed when I looked out into the congregation just before church started, and all the Broadmead seats were empty, because sometimes when it was rainy or snowy or the weather was bad, the Broadmeaders would stay home, which makes good sense and is very wise. We don't want to take any unnecessary risks, but I was disappointed that Mary Frances wasn't going to get to hear my sermon on Psalm 84. And then about five minutes late into the service, Mary Frances comes in and takes her seat. And she was never late. But at the end of the service, she said, I just felt for some reason like I should get myself up and come to church by myself today. If nobody else was coming, I felt like I needed to be there. And now I know why. So she got to hear all about Psalm 84 and be a part of our conversation about it that morning. I suspect that she really loved the line, the sparrow has found her a house 
and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. With her love of nature, I think she must have loved visualizing the birds finding places to put their nests in those walls around the temple. And I actually showed pictures that morning of people who had taken photos of birds' nests in the walls around the temple. So even the sparrows, even the little birds have found a place near God, a place in the walls right around the temple. And it goes on to say, happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. And that's really what this particular psalm is all about. The idea that we're all on a pilgrimage, this pilgrimage of life with God and this pilgrimage of life to God, always moving ever closer to God, ever closer to being at one with God. And that's certainly the way Mary Frances lived her life. She lived an amazing life full of so many relationships, so many different experiences but she was always rooted and grounded in her faith. And that is the life that she was leading, a life based on what she believed, those greatest commandments, love of God and love of neighbor, and then all of those other commandments that she wrote that we heard about earlier, which all flowed out of that rootedness in her faith, all flowed out of that love of God and love of neighbor. When we go back and look at some of the things that she wanted to be a part of this service, I especially think about that hymn, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. And of course, that hymn references a lot of the famous saints that we might know or have come across in our lives studying about. Uh, but it also goes back to the earliest years of the Christian faith when all Christians were called the saints. All of us were called to live out our faith in our daily life. And it has those lines like, they followed the right for Jesus' sake the whole of their goods, good lives long, or the world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. And there's not any reason, no, not the least, why I shouldn't be one too. We get the idea over and over again in this hymn that it is all about what we are choosing to do, what we are choosing to believe, how we are choosing to live our lives based on what we believe every single day. And I hear this echoed again in our gospel passage. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. When we think about how Mary Frances lived her life, whether we're thinking of the very specific things, like her Ten Commandments, which were read by her daughter earlier, or even just our day-to-day -day encounters with her. What was obvious was her kindness, her compassion, her desire to understand the needs of others or try to reach out and help meet the needs of others, or her generosity. She was so incredibly generous in reaching out and sharing what she had to help benefit others. All of these stories that we're telling about her and all of the words that we're singing in our hymns and all of the words that we're hearing in our scriptures, they remind us of the faith in which Mary Frances was grounded, but also the faith in which all of us are grounded. And as we continue to share our memories of her, as we continue to tell our stories about her, as we continue to celebrate her life and the presence that she was in our lives and the example that she was for us, I hope that that is a part of what we will remember. The faith that grounded her, the faith that fueled everything else that she believed and did. And may each of us also find that faith in us so that we can find those ways in which we're called to live every single day of our lives. Amen. We continue together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the prayers. For Mary Frances, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection, I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Mary Frances and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, comfort us in our sorrow. You raise the dead to life. Give to Mary Francis eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring Mary Francis to the joys of heaven. Mary Francis was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Spirit, give her fellowship with all your saints. Mary Francis was was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in the sorrows at the death of Mary Francis. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for all those whom we love but see no longer especially Mary Frances, Philip, Carol, Caroline, Jimmy, Herman, Elsa, Olga, Kimball, Roswell, JC, and Mariana. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Our final hymn is another that Mary Frances specifically requested for her funeral service. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. which comes at the end of the funeral service.
is a set of prayers that Mary Frances especially loved, and it is my privilege to read the commendation for her now. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Mary Frances. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.